Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Hofstra University Sports Camp webinar. We appreciate you joining us. We know your time is valuable, and um, we think it's awesome that we have so many people joining in to try to find out some great opportunities for the summer for your children. Uh, our focus tonight is on our Sports Academy Camp. Uh, it's one of the branches of our full camp service that we offer here at Hofstra University. I'll just give you a little background before we um, get into some of the meat and potatoes of it. Joining me tonight is going to be Mark Russell, who's our director of our sports academy camps. He organizes, sets everything up, and makes sure that all our coaches who are all Division I skilled uh, coaches and employees have everything they need to make your child's uh, experience safe, fun, and, and just a, a great summer for them. Also, we have uh, from our basketball office, and our assistant coach, Colin Curtin, who's run the camp for years, and he's an assistant coach, and uh, we won't hold it against him that he's out of Philly, but uh, he's a great guy, and he's great with the kids, and he's going to give you a little overview about basketball camp. And then we have our head baseball coach, John Russo. John's been running the NYBA for the last several years since we've taken it over um, from the Hirschfeld family. So the NYBA has been an institution in Long Island for over 45 years, and it's a unique uh, opportunity for your your children to play baseball at, at an instructional level. So John's going to go over that a little bit, and um, we'll make sure we go forward. Just to let you know where we're at here at Hofstra, we're planning on running a full-blown summer camp. Um, just so you know, we are uh, aligned with many agencies that help us make the decisions as far as health goes. Um, we're, we work closely with all the guidelines from the CDC. Um, which also the university does, and I'll get into that in, in a minute. And also we work, uh, we're certified by the American Camping Association, but there's something when you choose a camp for your child, you should really look at to see if they're ACA certified because there's a whole list of, uh, you know, protocols and procedures and things that you have to follow to make sure that everything is safe and uh, up to par. And also obviously we're uh, certified by the Board of Health. They come and visit pre-camp and they come visit uh, during the camp unannounced just to make sure everybody's following all the guidelines. One of the benefits we're really lucky here at Hofstra um, during this you know, tough time for everyone in the COVID is that we've been open the whole time. It's a university. We're one of the biggest schools in the Northeast, one of the most prominent schools in the Northeast, not just our academic program, but our athletic program also. So we've been open. We've had thousands of kids on campus. They've lived here. Not that you know we're going to live here in a, in, a, in a summer camp, but they've lived here. They've They've come to school here. They participated in sports here. They participated in recreational activities. So we're pretty in tune with how to make things uh, right for the children and uh, make things healthy. And one of the other great benefits we have is we have uh, Northwell Health right on campus with us. We have a medical school uh, right next to the athletic facility. And uh, we also have uh, skilled people in that area that advise us and guide us. And we think that's something that we can offer as everyone looks forward to the safety of their their children, you know, coming up in, in, a, in a year that's a little undecided with the pandemic. We feel like we're 100 percent ahead of the curve and we do everything that's mandated. And and like I said, we've been going on for a close to a year now with uh, making people safe and people of all ages. And our campus is open and um, we've had a, a great opportunity to work with Northwell and uh, their medical staff and uh, go from there. And the other thing also we have is we have a full uh public safety staff, who's also the majority of them are first aid uh, CPR certified. In addition, they're first responders. So that's important. Um, what we can talk about as far as COVID, and I'll get it right off the table out of the gate, is right now we don't have all the rules and regulations for the summer. Um, they come out a little bit of time, as you know, with many other things. But if camp was to start today, and obviously it's not, starting June 28th, if camp was to start today, the children would have to wear masks. That's the one thing everyone asks. And as of today, listen, I'm hoping and uh, praying that by June 28th, we don't have to wear the mask, but uh, right now they do. Um, social distancing is in effect, uh, depending on where you are, different things like all of our buildings here on campus, because we've been in, in service uh, for, you know, it never stopped, is uh, there's gone through from our fire marshal. We have our own hospital the fire marshal comes through and sets the limits on what we can put in each class just for safety reasons. We've been doing that. Um, anyone that comes on campus has a daily health screening, ask the uh, common questions about COVID. So to make sure everybody's in a good place and um, everybody's safe and moving forward. And the other thing is we're going to encourage hand washing, no matter where we are with the mask or whatever else. I think we've learned a lot of things and all of us as uh, people 
that have gone through this pandemic that, you know, hand washing is important and just being careful and making sure that, um, you know, just people know what it's about to take care of each other and just be kind and, and that brings safety and our knowledge, like I said, I'm on a task force that meets every Thursday with other people from the university that talk about any updates and stuff. So we're in tune, we're on target. And uh, I, I can really look you in the eye and believe that we're the most prepared camp to run this summer, um, just to our knowledge of what we have as a university. I'll give you some general camp information. And um, tonight we're gonna talk mostly about sports camps and the sports academy, but you're welcome to ask questions at the end. And I welcome your questions. We learn from your questions. We wanna know from your questions and we're gonna cover as much as we can. So send your questions anytime. And at the end, we'll go through and uh, make sure that we answer them all. The other thing I don't want to leave out is we're gonna offer discounts. Anyone that uh, is on registered for this webinar, We'll get uh, for any one week program of fifty dollars off, and it'll escalate so hundred if it's two weeks, you know, hundred fifty for three weeks, and we'll and we'll go on from there. So that's important to know that because you took your time out of your day, and we respect and appreciate that, that we will make sure that um, we take care of you and give you a discount. And we offer plenty of other discounts. You can look online from alumni discounts if you belong to any kind of union discounts. We you have to produce a union card. Um, we offer all the kinds of things for people including veterans and things like that. So, you know, it's it's worth your while to investigate that. And uh, other than this discount, which is, you know, solid for you, there might be something else that we can offer that can help you uh, make the camp more affordable for you. As far as camp, as far as camp goes, we start June 28th. Um, we have seven weeks of camp. It goes straight through. Um, and our specialty camp, which is the other side based outside of the sports camp, works in two week sessions and one week at the end. Sports camps are all one week sessions. You spend your time with the coaches and Mark will get into it in a few minutes, but um, we would love for you to see. We're gonna show some pictures later. Our facilities, then no one's gonna beat them. No one in Long Island's gonna beat what we do. We have the Max Sports Complex, which is uh, holds 5,000 people. It's, it's, it's indoors. We also have outdoor courts, which Con will speak about. We can do both depending on the weather. It's, it's air conditioned inside. It's an arena that plays division one basketball at the highest level. Uh, we also have uh, the baseball field is, is a turfed infield and uh, the whole batting cage area was just redone. And Coach Russo can talk about that. We have a soccer stadium. We have a lacrosse stadium. We have the Tigrine wrestling room. Um, our softball stadium is second to none. So as far as we uh, were concerned, no one's going to beat our facilities. And we also have the advantage of having Division One coaches whose job is to teach and educate athletes uh, of all ages. So we're kind of lucky on that. So the sports academy camps, like I said, go in seven one week programs, different things are all for different weeks. So uh, it will be in your best interest to check online and see what weeks you want to come and what kind of things are offered. And I think that's the best way to do it. You can register for as many weeks as one if you want, you can go through to seven, you can start off at one and see if you like it and, and go from there. But camp runs from nine to four. Um, the sports academy camps as a base tuition, which we'll get to, and then for $235, you can choose to get on the bus also and go from there. Um, we also have different things that uh, might be of interest to you. We have special days every week, uh, and a lot of times the sports camps will join us, whether it's a carnival outside or a concert or some kind of color wars, you know, any kind of thing to make camp a little bit more exciting, especially if you're here for a while. Um, each sports academy camp has a scheduled swim time. So it might be basketball swims Tuesday and Thursday. Maybe baseball goes Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Soccer could go at another time. Volleyball, which is one of our more popular sports that's played the physical fitness center. They are scheduled. So you schedule gym time. You'll get a, uh, you know update before that even starts to let you know when that goes. Uh, lunch is included in tuition. Um, and our lunch is awesome. It's off the charts. It's by Compass Foods. Compass is the dining service, the catering service right here on campus. There's usually a hot entree of the day. There's a vegetable, there's a potato, um, there's fruit, there's all kinds of uh, drinks brought out and there's a dessert at the end. So it's one of the things that the kids live for. You work hard, right? You play hard and you eat You eat to replenish your fuel. So we're pretty good with that. We said the transportation is an extra $235. A lot of people, especially with the COVID, have decided to carpool and figure things out. You can pick up and drop off. That's kind of easy. Um, we do everything. We run five buses in New York City. We go right out to Suffolk. Uh, in Nassau County and on uh, western, you know, part of Suffolk and eastern Queens, we do door-to-door -door transportation. So, um, you know, you can figure out what works best for you. And uh, there's something we call 
the Hofstra Advantage. And the Hofstra Advantage is just things that we feel like we offer at many other places on Long Island, especially Nassau County Camp. And one of the things that um, we love is our 240 acre campus. And our campus is beautiful. We, we welcome you to come drive through. And if you want, you know, you, you can walk around, check things out one day if you want. Uh, there's maps online. If you go on the camp website, there's a map. Um, but our campus is gorgeous. It's beautiful. And uh, if you want to drive around one day, just get a feel of what it's like. You can see how well manicured. And it's one of the things we take pride in. And our facilities are all state of the arts. They're college facilities. They're where our college teams play. Um, these are where our athletes get recruited to. And um, like I said, we've been able to maintain these and keep these at a high level. So when the students come for a camp, they experience the same kind of thing a college athlete would. And, and that's a pretty neat experience. And also we have um, any classrooms that are used. Uh, film sessions are done in, you know, the different film rooms we have on campus. We have theaters, we have labs if, you know, some of the kids are into other things. And and don't get me wrong, a lot of children come here and they'll take sports camps for a couple of weeks. Then they'll go in to do something academic. They might go in to do something with the theater and the art. So you're not locked into one thing. You can switch up every week and change on the fly as you like. And it makes it go kind of fun. We have, like I said before, a dedicated public safety office for the full day. Jimmy Bailey is our public safety guy. Couldn't be a better guy. He stays with us all day just to make sure everybody's safe and smart and the kids feel um, that they're included in part of what we do all across campus. And our public safety is um, second to none. And, and Jimmy Bailey's been here for, gosh, probably almost 20 years with us. And he's kind of been a staple of what we do. And one of the other things we're pretty proud of is our uh, full staff at the infirmary. We have um, Carrie, who's our head nurse, is a school nurse in um, the Sawanica School District. We probably have four or five nurses with her every day. We have EMTs out on the field that are there on radio and on cart. God forbid something goes wrong, we're on it right away. And like I said before, our public safety offices are all uh, trained first responders, so they know how to treat things also. So that safety is a, a priority here. Um, you know, all of us have had our kids come through the program and experience it. So we, we know what it is to, to, you know, care about your kid, worry about your kid and create a first time experience that's off the charts. Um, the camp directors uh, are all industry professionals. Like I said, our coaches are all professional coaches at the highest level. We're a division one school, which means we play at the highest level um, in every sport. And uh, most of the teams here and almost all have been very successful in competing. And, and so we're pretty we're pretty proud of that. And even our teachers in some of the other fields, they're all uh, certified in their field. They're people that are esteemed in their field. And, and some of the other things we do, like if even went to the BOCES program, they're trained professionals in their area. And we said before, lunch is by Compass Foods. Compass is dining service, the catering service on campus. So, um, you know, it, it's good for us in that we know that it's healthy. And one of the things I'll talk about also um, with the catering service, we meet everybody's needs as far as if you need a special diet, whether it's something to do with uh, a medical thing, it's a religious thing, we work on it. And as long as you tell us in advance, uh, we have it ready and they're ready to go. And uh, we know how important it is to get a nutritious meal. And that's why we offer such a important part of uh, our camp day is the kids just sit, relax uh, out of the elements and for them to sit and have a good meal and, and, and feel nourished by the time they get back out. I'm going to turn it over to Mark Russell. Mark's going to tell you a little about the sports academy in general. And after that, we'll, you'll meet a couple of our coaches. I just encourage you to um, please make sure you have questions and make sure you ask them at the end. We would love to speak about that and uh, talk to you about, you know, what you think is important that we might not have covered. Mark, take it away. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that sports academy and, one of the things with the sports academy is every sport is all day long. So whether you choose baseball or basketball or, or cheer or dance or lacrosse, you'll be in that particular sport all day long working on, you know, your fundamentals, your practice drills, and and you'll go from there. You'll you'll stay with those kids all day long. Um, they take place, Terry mentioned, on, you know, some of the best facilities we have, you know, that are, that are around this this area. Um, they're all Division One fields and state-of-the-art arenas. Uh, the camp is you'll swim twice a week. So a little different than our other camps where they swim every day. They'll swim twice a week, um, designated time, designated date. It could be a Monday, Friday, could be a Tuesday, Thursday, whatever we designate. And the campus do um, eat for the most part, almost all the sports campus eat in the arena. Uh, the exception is um, baseball who eat over at USA, another um, facility. 
and boys and girls across eat across the street at the stadium. So um, that's the only difference with um, with eating. But for the most part, they all eat in the same place. The facilities, as you can see, um, we have the David Max Sports Exhibition Complex. That houses all women's basketball or men's basketball. Uh, cheer and dance are in there. Um, University Field is our, you know, our baseball camp. The Bill Edwards Stadium is our softball camp. Um, the David Mack Physical Ed Center is for volleyball um, and used also as an indoor facility if we need for, uh, you know, on rain dates, we could bring people in there too. You have Shewitt Stadium, which is across the street, which houses the women's um, and men's lacrosse programs and the Hofstra Soccer Stadium, um, where our boys and girls uh, soccer camp is located. We also have our tennis courts um, where we have our old, you know, seven weeks of tennis. All last week is our coaches camp. Um, so you can see the tennis courts there um, and the Ryan wrestling room, which is where we take care of all, you know, wrestling campers. And obviously they swim right in that Hofstra swim center. You can see that's an Olympic size swimming pool um, and that's where they swim. So our first camp is our, is our cheer camp run by the head coach, Christine. Um, she runs it along with an assistant, um, she has several of her players helping the camp. Um, the camp is trained all week um, with the staff, and then they put on a show at the end of the week um, with where parents are usually been able to come. Hopefully this year we'll be able to do the same thing um, where they can come and watch what they worked on all week long. The second is uh, the girls' basketball camp um, run by the head coach. Um, she has her assistants on the floor at all times. Um, her players are there. So all these camps are all run with their head coaches, the assistants and the players are all part of the uh, coaching staff. Um, she works for skill development. She does small groups instruction. Um, it's broken up by grade level. Obviously, if you're a little better, they'll, they'll move you up and down, um, and just basic skill training. It's in the Mac center in the sports complex. Um, they are on the floor there and they also use, um, the training facility, which I believe is the picture that you're looking at there. Um, the girls will go in there as do the boys. Um, our wrestling camp, um, run by coach Dennis Papadatis. Um, great camp, um, right in the, um, the wrestling room, the camp is geared towards, you know, campus who strive to learn a little more fundamentals of the sport. It's a lot of teaching, um, a lot of fun. He does a lot of different types of games in there, conditioned a lot. Um, one of the camps where, you know, I, I leave them up there and the kids just have a ton of fun. Um, there's never usually an issue at all. Uh, coach does just a wonderful job. Our volleyball camp, one of our popular camps, um, tends to sell out every single year, all three weeks. Uh, coach Masoa does an amazing job with her staff um, helping out, and she brings back all her players. So all her players are the counselors. Um, the kids love it. Um, the camp does focus on all different types of fundamental skills, setting, attacking, serving. Um, they play games throughout. They have a championship at the end um, with awards. Um, she does a great job. She's in the, the air-conditioned Max Sports Complex. Um, and it, like I said, it, it does sell out for all three weeks. Our tennis camp, which is run our seventh week by our head coach, Tennis Jason, um, little more intense training than normally for the other six weeks. Um, he kind of gets after it. it's a little bit of the older kids that, that come to this. Um, so he really works them hard on the court. Um, great for if, you know, you're getting ready to come out if you're a high school player coming out for the fall season um, for tennis, he'll get you, you know, he'll get you in shape for those that week that he has you. Um, we do bring in, you know, a, a strength and conditioning coach to all of our camps that, you know, help out all these coaches, um, whether at the beginning or the end of, of each day, but um, they're in there um, doing different things with all the kids. Coach Myers softball camp, um, again, two weeks towards the end. Um, Coach does a, a great job with the kids on the field. Um, a lot of fun, she, you know, again, does all the techniques with fielding and hitting and throwing, um, running bases. She does a, a, a great job with putting out, you know, teaching the kids how to slide and, and um, a, again, we'll, mixes the kids up a little bit by age and by ability. So um, it's, it's in the Bill Edwards stadium, beautiful um, softball stadium. Um, he's got, she's got batting cages right there um, where she could also work with pitches too and catches. 
Kelly Olson dance. Um, great job by, by Kelly Olson with this dance Academy. Um, she, again, she's there with her assistants or some of her players who run um, the dance Academy. It's held in the uh, air conditioned Mac arena. Um, again, she tries to mix it all up with a jazz hip hop, um, just changes all the different types of songs in between. Um, a great performance she puts on at the end of the week, again, where the parents can come and watch them. And Coach Noel, Coach Simon's uh, soccer camp for boys and girls. This is for all seven weeks, very popular camp. It's in the soccer stadium. Um, they, do, they do a great job. Again, they have their assistants and all their players that help out with uh, the coaching. Again, small-sided games, a um, lot of teaching, a lot of soccer drills. Um, week seven is for the older kids. And that's more of a speed agility jump start again towards their season, towards their fall season, um, where they, they'll, they'll push those kids extremely hard there. Coach Tierney's lacrosse camp, again, um, favorite over there. Coach does a great job. His assistant coach runs it over there. Coach Gorman uh, helps out with it. Um, again, they, they do all skill work. Um, they're in the stadium there. They eat over there in the pavilion. Um, they have a full theater underneath. If he wants to show them any kind of film, um, or if it rains, um, he'll teach them from catching to shooting to defense, to goalie play, you know, face off technique. Um, he's done a lot of different things with all of them down there. And again, he'll, he'll adjust you according to your age and your ability if you need to move up or move down. Uh, Shannon's camp, girls across camp, great camp. Shannon runs over across the street, the same place. Um, they eat in the pavilion there. Um, Shannon does a great job working with the kids. She's out in the field with her assistants and her players. Um, they do a wonderful job teaching, you know, all the different types of techniques and kind of helping them, you know, get through it, whether they're first year players or they're a little bit more experienced. Um, she'll work with each and every one of them. And this is new. This is the Hostra Sports Performance Camp. This is run by our head strength and conditioning coach, James Pentagrass. Um, this is in the afternoon. So it's an afternoon program. It's after camp from 4 to 5.30. Um, you would come pick up your child afterwards. Um, he's in the camp all week long, or his assistants are. Um, they're in different parts. Sometimes they stretch the kids. They work with the basketball players and stretch them in the morning, and they'll get over to the soccer kids, and they'll get to each camp. Um, every single day with doing something different. Um, this is at the end of the day. So this is for, you know, the kids that want to work on all different types of development, whether it's, you know, linear speed or, you know, change of directions, agility training, strength training, you know, hip care, fle you know, flexible, flexibility, cool downs, competition. So um, he's great. And um, this is something new that we're just offering. And it is again at the end of the day after camp. And I'm going to turn over to Joe Mahalik, boys basketball camp over to CC. Colin, who's the assistant men's basketball coach. Kyle, you're good. Mark, appreciate it. And everyone that's uh, tuning in tonight, um, thanks for coming on. Um, my name is Colin Curtin, like Terry mentioned earlier. Uh, I am an assistant uh, coach here at Hofstra. Just finished my eighth year. And I have to be honest with you guys, I, I look forward to summer and, and running summer camp. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, you know, I, I think the thing that I love about it so much is, is the relationships that we grow with these kids. You know, uh, throughout my years here, um, we've had kids that have, have started, you know, in third grade and have been with us all the way through. And now they're in high school and you get to, you know, follow and see how they grow. Um, the best part about, about the basketball camp is, is we welcome all levels. You know, whether your, your son has been playing basketball for three or four years or you're just beginning. You know, it's, it's a camp for for all, um, all kids, all levels. Um, to bring you through uh, a little bit of a, a daily schedule, you know, we'll start in the mornings and we'll have, you know, station work and station work will be, you know, working on the individual and getting them, getting their game polished, whether it's, you know, shooting or dribbling or working on defense, uh, passing, um, you know, all, all the individual, um, you, know, you know, drills that, that make uh, a player a player. And, and then what we'll do is we'll probably play, you know, a game, um, between, you know, the two, two teams or four teams that we have, we usually break it up into two leagues. We'll have an, uh, an older league and a younger league and, you know, we'll play a couple games right before lunch. And then, um, you know, after lunch, we'll, we'll get into some of our, um, 
you know, daily uh, games that we play. Uh, they're individual games, they're, they're team games, whether it's a, you know, three point contest, a foul shooting contest. Um, and, and we like to have the, for the kids really get into it. So it, it's something that we do um, daily and, and throughout the week. And, you know, on Friday, we kind of bring it all together and have all of our championships with whether it's games or individual um, awards or team awards. Um, and and the, the kids have a great time. Um, like Mark and Terry mentioned, it's in the Max Sports Complex, Plex, uh, air conditioned. Um, so, you know, the kids really don't go outside uh, all that much. Uh, the other neat thing we like to do um, too at camp is, you know, we, we kind of like to give the kids a sneak peek of, of some of the facilities that we have here at Hofstra. And, and we, you know, we'll bring them into our film room and our, our uh, locker room and, and we'll show them where our guys lift weights. So they get the full experience of, you know, a division one basketball player and, and, you know, um, what they go through on a daily basis. Um, the other thing we've done in the past too, that's been really good is we we've brought guest speakers in and we've had guys that have played in the NBA. We've had guys that are our local, um, college head coaches that have come in and, and we've had, um, other G league, uh, assistants and head coaches that have come to camp and, and spoke to kids. And, you know, it, it's a, it's a great, it's a great time for, for kids to, to learn the game. And, and, uh, you know, we really get into it. My staff gets into it. Um, and like I said, the relationships that we build with these kids are, are, are just great because we're, we're able to follow them year after year. And, you know, I'll get messages throughout the year. Hey, are you coming back to camp? And, and uh, we really get um, get excited for camp and, and to see the kids and, and you know, get the kids better. And, and in the long run, you know, a lot of these kids come in and some might not know people that come to camp. But by the time Friday hits, you know, it, it always feels like uh, we get, you know, a bunch of kids that come up for the next week and the week after that. So um, we have a lot of fun. Uh, we, ha we know the kids have a lot of fun. And, and I really look forward to this summer. Hi, everyone. I'm John Russo, head baseball coach here at uh, Hofstra University. Uh, we've been doing the New York Baseball Academy here for, I believe this will be the start of the seventh year. The academy itself has run over 45 years. Uh, one of the, the big things that interests me in the NYBA Academy was the length of service it went. You know, the way that I describe it as this is like, it's a special sauce. It's, you know, something you can't duplicate at another camp. I mean, for something to have success over the 40 years has to be done right. And, you know, I've been coaching now for 20 years, running camps before this for 13 years. And I have no problem saying that this is by far the best baseball camp that you could attend or um, that we can hold here at Hofstra or myself. Like, that's why I wanted to learn it. I have uh, four kids of my own. I'm understanding how camps are important to all of us. Um, I wanted to know how the guy, Bob Hirschfield, ran a successful camp for uh, 35 years. So I spent the last uh, you know, few years learning everything and learning the secret sauce. And um, you know, the basic uh, ingredients that I can tell you are the kids have fun daily. Uh, we just don't throw out the balls and bats and say, here, we're gonna play games. You know, we, we teach them baseball. Kids uh, from seven years old, to 15 years old, learn how to pitch, catch, play infield, play outfield, uh, bunt, uh, run downs, run the bases, uh, you know, play all kinds of different positions. Um, I know with travel right now, you know, kids aren't getting the opportunity to experience a lot of positions. You know, kids get labeled as seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 year olds. Uh, it's just an outfielder. You know, he's an outfielder. We need this. And so at our camps, if he thinks he can pitch, we allow him to pitch during the week and have private instruction for each of the guys that want to pitch throughout the week. And, you know, the, the thing I like best about it is, is um, you know, we're a little bit talent uh, driven. So like sometimes you go to camps and there'll be like two kids that are great and a couple of kids uh, that aren't as advanced in baseball and it makes everything there. So we do move kids up in age groups to keep uh, kids talent across the board and even and then, you know, it makes the other groups and everything equal out. So we spend most of Monday uh, testing the kids and getting a feel for their ability. We also keep records uh, from the previous years of where kids have come to our camp. And um, 
you know, we already know what, you know, level they should be at. And so then we almost have it right on Monday when they walk through the door and we're learning the new kids that we're seeing for the first time. And then if you come back a second week, you already start off at that uh, area. So to me, you know, camp and everything is about the kids and enjoying it and keeping time moving fast. And the whole camp is segmented each day um, to keep the kids interest. You know, we lead off, we pick the bases, um, you know, they get batting practice individualized every day in the cages and they get a individual hitting instructor on those days in three different cages going with machines and they have three different stations set up for tees. Uh, we have infield instructors go around every day, outfield instructors go around each day, uh, pitching instructors go around each day. So, you know, what they would do on one daily, you know, one time go see a hitting coach, we get that five days a week at the NYBA. Uh, you know, we just try to do the best we can uh, with every kid, we keep the younger kids over in the bubble area, but then we still mix uh, most groups in through the bubble on each day. If we have a rainy day, the bubble's one of the the biggest hidden secrets on all of Long Island of something we get to use to keep having practice and working with these kids. And some of my favorite practices is when we go in there. Um, we really enjoy the day-to-day um, uh, build up to the end of the week. We play a World Series on Monday where the parents are able to come and watch the end of week games. And um, and then we have a, a closing ceremony where we do awards um, at the end of the week for all of the kids, you know, with our biggest award being the Super Hustler Award. And that's the kid that listens the best, follows instructions the best, um, learn the most during the week. And we like that to reward kids that are doing stuff the right way. It always isn't about who threw the hardest or who hit the farthest. Um, so it's just a little gist of what we do um, on a daily basis at the NYBA and willing to uh, answer any questions anyone has. Okay, just to go over the pricing structure a little bit, you can see it up there for a one-week session. $565 if you want to add on transportation. Um, that's $235. That's up to you. And, it, you know, the prices obviously are uh, partitioned as we go week by week. And um, you can, you know, as you come, it, it gets a little better. But I just want to mention a couple of things before we take on all the questions. Uh, and please ask. We, we like the questions. We like to learn. We want your, your interest, your feedback. Um, a couple of things. Uh, just know there's a discount. Uh, if you want to come to a one week, it's fifty dollars. Two weeks, a hundred thousand goes on. And uh, any of the camps you choose, we're going to offer that discount through the end of the week. So you have a couple of days to um, check it out and look at it. The other thing I wanted to get back into was one of the new things we put into was the uh, sports performance camp. Um, and our strength and conditioning coach, which we call Jimmy Waits, is probably one of the most prominent strength and conditioning people on Long Island. And I know, like John, the same way. I have four kids and. Um, I have children that, you know, played it at, at the college level and I had some that didn't, but all of them received some kind of strength and conditioning. And that can get really, that can get really heavy. That can get heavy duty on the number. That's heavy duty on you, you as parents. And I know traveling them around. So Jimmy Waits does an after camp uh, session. It's only $125. It goes from four o'clock and, and lasts till about 530 uh, in the afternoon. And you use the same weight training program and strength and conditioning program that our athletes do in the same facility. So I asked you to look at that because it's really a cool thing. And we kind of answered the call from people that were asking us, says, Hey, we're spending too much money um, going out and getting private instruction, in all these places and uh, for strength and conditioning. And we're not sure everybody's qualified. Well, Jimmy Waits is the best. I can tell you that he's uh, known on the Island as one of the best strength and conditioning. So it's kind of a cool thing that if you come to camp during the day, um, you stay an extra hour and a half and you get to build your body up and and uh, figure things out. So um, the other thing I want to do, if someone, if a couple of people could ask us, just uh, send us uh, through your email or, and, and especially on this show is how'd you hear about us? Because we want to know we're always marketing things and we have commercials, we have radio things, we have uh, Internet. We're just intrigued. That's how everyone finds out about us. But to be honest with you, the thing we're most proud of is most people find out about us from word of mouth. They find out about some people that have been here, they enjoyed their experience and know what it is. And I'll tell you this, and I can tell you from my experience as a, as a dad, that when the kid walks in and sees the arena or walks onto the baseball field or walks onto the uh, Hofstra Lacrosse Stadium where the you know NCAA quarterfinals is held, uh, they're in awe. And that's a cool thing. And I think that's something that you can't put a price tag on, but it's something pretty neat about what we like to offer and go through it. And like I said before, um, 
I'm going to go on our safety is as best second to none. Uh, we are a university, a prominent university in the Northeast, and our job is to keep people safe all year long. This isn't something we just pulled up and you know started to run something out in, in June. I mean, I've been here 21 years, and uh, we're, we're, we have a full-time year-round camp program, and that's what we do in the off-season. And like now is make sure that we're providing a, self, a safe and healthy environment, especially in this pandemic. We're very lucky that we have a task force. We're lucky that we're – associated with Northwell, and we're very lucky that we have people on campus that are experienced and uh, through our Safe Start program that really showed us how to how to run something safely. And we're hoping, like everybody else, that by June 28th, a lot of the protocols are knocked down and we can have a, a safe summer. But um, as a guy that's been in education and the guy that's been in camp business and a, and a dad, these kids need to get out. They need to get out. They need to have a little bit of fun. They need to be a little normal in a safe environment. And I'm 100% confident we're providing that. So I'd like to know uh, if you have any questions, send them out. We'll be willing to answer them. And um, we're very lucky we have Jackie from our marketing department, who is awesome. And uh, any of the questions, she'll throw them out, and uh, we'll decide who, who answers them the best. And we're going to always give you the honest answer and the straight-up answer. And um, I think you got to see two of our coaches and how quality they are and how big time they are and as far as how we're going to treat your child. So if we could put a couple of the questions up, that would be great. First one comes from Kimberly. Will there be temperature checks or just daily health screens? Kimberly, that's a great question that, to be honest with you, I don't really know the answer now. If it was to happen today, we would probably be doing temperature checks and daily health screenings. Definitely daily health screenings, but as things progress and we go along, we're not sure where we're going to end up at the end. So that's a great question. I appreciate it. Um, all I can tell you is we're going to follow the protocol. Like I said, we're from American Camping Association, which hey, no matter where you go to camp, you should make sure that you see that symbol because that shows that people have taken things to the next level. We're uh, mandated by the Board of Health. We've already filed our paperwork and also the CDC. Like I said, we have a, a safe start program and a task force that I meet on every Thursday to keep ourselves up to date. And that in a combination with Northwell, I don't know exactly what's going to be, but I can tell you that's going to be whatever the best thing for your kids going to be. Discounts to Northwell employees, we sure do. We sure do. Northwell is one of our partners. Um, we're proud of that. And like I said, our medical school is right next door to our athletic facilities. There is a discount. You can check online or if you call the office, they'll be more than happy to figure that in for you. So you combine your Northwell discount and the discount from being on this um, this webinar, you, you can get a, a really nice package. Seth, will will be playing basketball all day? Colin, take that one. Yeah, Seth. So we do play basketball all day. And like I said a, a little bit earlier, it, it it varies what we do. In the morning, it's more station work, more focused on individual um, workouts and, and, you know, polishing your game and getting your game better. Um, and then we'll play games. We'll have two leagues. Um, we'll have an older group, a younger group. And usually there's four teams in each league. And um, those two teams will play against each other. Um, and then in the afternoon, we'll do some competition stuff, some individual competitions, some team competition, and that varies from, you know, we've done three-point comp contests and a foul shooting contest and a hot spot contest. So um, it is basketball all day, um, and, and we vary from, you know, individual workout to some team stuff to some individual contests, and, and it seems like the kids really like it. What are the age groups, the youngest? We start – for campers that are entering the second grade. And it goes up right through high school. So um, depending on your age group, you're grouped according to your grade. And then even like Coach Russo went into before, and your ability. So if you're a fourth grader and you can compete with the seventh graders and that's what you desire, well, ask them, hey, Eric, uh, would you like to play with the older kids? We think you're good enough after the first couple of days. And that's kind of a cool thing for a kid. So it's grouped by um, age, which starts, I said, going into second grade and goes right through high school. And like Colin had said also at his camp, there's different leagues depending on your ages and different skill levels. So like as far as baseball, uh, you're not going to have a second grader playing with a, an 11th grader. We, we break them up. And um, John, maybe you can just go quick as far as baseball, give an example where everyone goes with the different fields from the West field to the main diamond, right? To the, to the bubble. Just give a quick overview of that. So we basically, um, you know, spend Monday morning learning the kids that we have. And I mean, it's a big uh, secret to us is like it's a talent based um, camp. 
So we try to figure out where the kids need to be. So there'll be plenty of times that we'll have a nine-year-old that we think may be advanced and have him up with 10-year-olds or maybe even up as much to 11-year-olds. And um, I think that that's where the kids find the most enjoyment is to be around other kids at their skill level and, you know, keep it that way. Or some kids we might say, hey, they need to stay here for a week, but then they got really well and they come back a second week. The second week we might move them up. Um, you know, some weeks we might, you know, move up some, might not other. It's a, it's a week to week thing, but you know, our goal is if kids are here multiple weeks, they should be moving up in our eyes and they should be getting better. And that should be a goal of theirs and a goal of parents. And we make it a big presentation when they do go up, like, Hey, uh, Terry's been in the nines for the last two weeks, but he's going up to tens. Let's everybody give him a high five and everybody high fives him. And then we bring them up to the new fields on Monday afternoon and, you know, it's a sense of accomplishment and and do better. And, and you know, we're always paying attention, you know, with my staff and uh, supervisors for each area. I have one out at the fields, one out at the um, the turf fields in the bubble. And then I have a guy at the main diming. And we're basically always just watching kids and seeing where we can move kids around and what can we do to make everything better on a daily basis. Can my child play up there? Vance, I think we kind of covered that. Um... They can, and uh, like John said, and Colin will say the same thing, the first day it's really an evaluation day to see who belongs where, and then uh, divided with your team um, by your age group and then your ability. And you know, like Coach Russo said, you hope that they can advance themselves up and eventually you move up and, and progress, and that's really our goal, to get children better. And one of the things that we emphasize here is we teach. This isn't a roll the ball out like, like Colin said, it's not a roll the ball out. We teach. There's instruction. You're going to learn a skill. You're going to try to take it to the game and go from there. And that's why we like to bring in sometimes people from different uh, other circuits just to meet people. And they do the same thing in baseball. Like John brings in a lot of other college coaches just so you get a little dynamic from somebody else. I saw over your social media pages that you've had just guest instructors in your camp in the past. What type of guest speakers come in and to provide instruction? John, you want to talk about what you do and then Kyle, maybe a couple that you brought in. John, you want to go first? Yeah. So one of the things I look for, you know, I, I think rules will be changed a little bit this summer with COVID, but I think we have plenty of local guys that are coaching college that attended the NYBA. I, I think that's borderline amazing. And so I bring them in to talk about their experience and to show the kids like, hey, this is something you could do. Like Mike Gaffney at uh, LIU is usually every year he went to the camp, he attended it, then he played professional baseball, went to college, played professional baseball, and now he's coaching college baseball. And I can't find a better uh, guest instructor for him because he's a Long Island guy and he can relate to the kids. And there's a lot of those guys that are around that I want the kids to see and aspire to be and, and know that it can happen to kids right here on the island uh, from Staten Island, from the Bronx, um, just right here in our area. We've had, we've been around for so long now, kids have been able to attend the NYBA, play college, play professionally, and are now in our coaching system right here on the island. So that's one of the things I look for. And I look to give the kids as different looks as many as I can with uh, maybe a hitting guy one week, a pitching guy one week, you know, uh, guys that have a different focus. So the kids will have the advantage to hear different guys talk each week and, and see different stories. Yeah, I think the, um, the speakers are, are so important to, to our camp, and, and it's a little bit of the wow factor for the kids because, you know, we bring in uh, these speakers from all over, whether they're, they're local college coaches or, you know, we've had NBA guys, uh, Charles Jenkins. We've had, you know, Justin Wright Foreman has been, been around campus. Uh, Speedy Claxton, who's on staff, is always down there with the kids too. Uh, we, we've talked to um, different G League coaches, Jay Hernandez, who's the head coach at the, the Charlotte Swarm. We've had Norm Richardson, who's an assistant in the G League. So we like to touch, you know, all, all different types of bases uh, in the basketball world. And, and I think uh, the kids get a kick out of it. And, and you know, everyone's dream is to play in the NBA and, and to get to the highest level. And we, we cover that. We cover, you know, um, whether it's it's local colleges or the NBA or the G League. And, you know, I'll tell you a little story. That there's, there's a kid that is playing at Michigan State right now, Tyson Walker. Uh, one of our first years, he was a camper. He was a camper. And, and every time I see him, 
we always laugh and say, you know, and, and he'll bring up a, a speaker. He said, oh, I remember when I was at Hofstra camp and, and uh, you know, Charles Jenkins was there and he was talking about, you know, the process of going to college and becoming a pro and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and now he, he's playing at the highest level of college basketball at Michigan State. So it's, uh, you know, it's great to, to connect with those kids that, that have come through camp and have learned some, some things. And, and uh, I think speakers are so important. I have something to add real quick. Um, Just like CC, like this year was my first ever uh, um, signee at Hofstra. I have him on the freshman now. He used to attend all six a week at camp. I've known him since he was nine years old. And now he's on uh, Hofstra's uh, baseball team, Matt Pelcher. And so I'll probably bring Pelcher in at some point this summer so he could see. But he used to attend all six weeks of camp for every year. We had a presentation just for him. And then he ended up being good enough to sign with us. And I thought it was a very surreal thing for a kid that came through our camp system to sign at Hofstra that had been developed from nine years old. Shannon Campbell, do you have a lot of girls in a 14-year-old range doing soccer? How do you match boys and girls? Mark, you want to take that one, please? Sure. So Coach Nuttall, Coach Simon, they mix the they do mix boys and girls together. Um, so a 14-year-old will be playing with the older group. It could be 14, 15, 16. Um, they, they match them up evenly. They don't play full field games. They usually play side games. Um, it, it actually is a great experience for both of them because – you know, you, you get the girls who play a little more of a finesse game compared to the boys, but um, at least I believe that. And, you know, they, they tend to have a lot of fun. They mix and mingle and they have a good time. They go down and eat lunch together and and they work together. And, and again, you know, you, you talk about a 14-year-old could play, you know, possibly with a 15 or 16-year-old. Um, they do their best in the soccer camp to keep the kids engaged where they're in it, the best spot for them. So whether it's a kid that you're moving up or a kid you're moving down or the kids that are staying in the same age group, they try to make sure that the kids are there to have fun, to learn and have the best experience for that camp week. So um, the girls do play with the boys, if that's the question, whether it's even as low as seventh and eighth graders, um, they do mix them in. Brandy, do you offer a three day week program or only five days a week? Randy, we only offer five days a week because we feel to get the full experience and really understand and learn. And, and the other thing, you know what, there's a great place to make friends. So five days is the best uh, we found through our, our years of experience to uh, really reap the benefits of the instruction and to make friends and, and just to get the proper, um, the proper balance of what it needs to be to, to get a valuable experience at the end of the week. Group size. Um, I don't think usually we keep the groups 10 or less, right, guys? I mean, for the most part, most of it's less. But, you know, sometimes if you want to play with your friend, it might be more. But uh, we're real strict with the ratios. And listen, at the at, at the height of the summer here, we have a couple hundred counselors on. So uh, safety, uh, concern, and following all the American Campus Association guidelines are important. So I would say we don't get ever past 10. Uh, unless it's a special case. And for the most part, it's less than that. And uh, that's the way you break up into your teams. You're you're with other people. And uh, so your team might be eight people playing hoops. You might be right nine on a baseball team and go from there. But we, we tend to make sure that we would rather you be, um, you know, in a smaller group where the instruction is more, more, um, more dynamic than it would be in a large group when you, you know, you're not going to be able to understand what the coach says. Well, mask wearing being forced during gameplay, including above the nose. Right now, Susan, that's a great question. We don't really know. Um, we're going to follow the guidelines that whatever they told us. Um, I know in high school this year, they depending on where you went. I know in the in the private league, they didn't wear masks at all during the game and in basketball, and they had to on the bench. I know in the public league, they had to put it up, but um, had to, it could be down below the nose on the chin. Um, so it depends on what the rules are going to be by then. And like I said, we haven't got anything yet. We just uh, were told to prepare for camp. So we've prepared, you know, Mark's worked hard on preparing many different scenarios for that. But I mean, I hope that it comes to the point where everybody feels safe enough and the vaccines are out enough that we don't have to wear masks at all. But whatever the guidelines from the CDC that come from the state, which then go to the Board of Health, that's what we're going to follow. And again, we have Northwell as our partner that'll advise us um, on the best way to do that. 
Well, camp get canceled. It's raining. Can you safely accommodate kids? That's a great question. We should have gone over. Our indoor facilities are second to none. John mentioned before the bubble. We have an 80-yard turf bubble indoors that we use in case of um, in case of inclement weather. We've never canceled camp for the weather in my 21 years. We also have a rec center up the road that we only use really in rain. We have a physical education center, uh, which is the PEC. We have the Max Sports Complex, which is connected to it. And also, if we need be, we also have theaters and uh, other things if we want to do lectures and things like that during the rain. But that's a great question. But um, it's never canceled because of the rain. We're pretty strict on that. And we're under the guidance of the university that we also have um, an alarm system that goes off if the if the if there's thunder and lightning, if it comes too close, we, we get told to shut down and move inside. So we're pretty we're pretty in tune with the safety and uh, as far as the weather goes. But that was a great question. Thank you. Dwight, is swimming optional? It, it is. We're never going to make someone go in a pool. We're never going to. I know in basketball, CC, right? If the kids want to go swim, they can. Otherwise, they can stay in the gym and shoot. And John's the same thing, right? It's optional. They're never going to make anyone go, hey, some kids want to go and can't wait to get in the pool. Some kids don't want to be bothered. I know a lot. I would say, Colin, most of the kids stay in the gym and shoot, right? I mean, as opposed to. And so it's not. It's, it's up to you. The pool's neat because it's indoor. You get out for a little while. They change up. They jump around for, you know, half hour, 40 minutes. And and they can get out, but it's it's clearly optional, and you can decide to go on one day and not the next, and we're never going to make anyone jump in the pool. Aviation program. My son is graduating fifth grade in June. will be eligible to enter the aviation program this summer. I logged on late, so I'm uncertain it's already discussed. Uh, Desiree, was not discussed. Uh, the aviation program is part of our BOCES program. Our BOCES program starts with children entering the seventh grade. So... Um, he looks like he's a year short, um, but listen, if you felt he was mature enough and it was something you felt that would be of great interest to him and you felt it was something he could handle, he might be with a little bit older kids. We're always willing to make accommodations based on uh, a parent who obviously you know you know, you know, know your son better than we would if you think that would be something that would uh, benefit him. I just can tell you the thing's really cool. There's a simulator. I've been over there plenty of times playing with it, believe it or not, and you sit in there and it's a flight thing like the flight deck would be on a plane and it's a pretty neat um, it's a pretty neat way to learn about aviation and stuff. So it starts in the seventh grade. If you wanted to do it earlier, we could always you know speak with you and just ask, ask a couple of questions to let us know if we think that um, we're all in the right spot and it'll be a good spot for them. All right, thank you for everyone for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. Just go over a couple of things before we leave. Um, feel free to throw any question out you want on a, an email and we'll answer them. you know we're here and uh, you know, we usually in our office by eight o'clock and we're here late most nights and um, just know there is a discount and uh, I'd love to see you join us and take advantage of that. That'll last through the end of the week. You can do that online. You can call, you can fax, you can email and, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out if you want to be part of this. And uh, I can tell you, I hope what you learned tonight was not just what we offer as programs and our great facilities and how safe we are, but I think from listening to Coach Russo and, uh, and CC down there, and Mark, that we're enthusiastic. We love this, man. This is what we do. We love it. This is what this is. What we look forward to the summer. It's a blast, and we have great times. And I thought CC telling the question about the young man they used to see on the college basketball court was now at Michigan State and talked about people at camp. That's great. And John's story also about Matt Pelcher coming right came to camp. He's a little boy. Now he got a Division One scholarship to play. That's what it's about, and that's what we love, and that's what it is. And I'll just tell you something else. Uh, We'd love for you to join us. We'd love to be part of what we do. And anytime you have a question, we're here. Mark, right? He fills all the questions you may have over the summer. I don't care if it's something silly and he'll get with the coaches. So we get it done and uh, we go from there. So we thank you again for joining us. Um, we'd love to see you be part of what we do. Uh, I can just tell you now our registrations, to be honest with you, are, are skyrocketing. So um, we're not sure what we're going to have for some of the limitations on the space. So I would ask you if you want to, be part of this really only all you have to do is put down a deposit we're not looking for all your money and we have payment plans and everything to work with you and um we appreciate like you said you coming out and, and being part of what we do thank you uh enjoy the night be safe out there to you and your family and please be any questions please let us know and we're more than happy to help you out have a good evening